all prior playwrights were afflicted by this? You think O'Neill lacked a uh, like to give the characters offhand posy. I don't think that he had the same kind of level of parallax because he didn't have much of a sense of humor. Well, but, uh, yeah, just give me your thoughts on that. Well, I think that the best modern playwright that I would say overdid it with the stage directions was Williams, the most famous one. He probably overdid it. That having said that, um, the writing itself was strong enough in his top five, six, seven plays: uh, Night of the Guana, uh, uh, Glass Menagerie. Uh, streetcar, uh, 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 cat on a hot tin roof, and a handful of others. Um, uh, O'Neill uh, was not as heavy-handed in the stage direction. Arthur Miller was far more heavy-handed. Um, Miller is probably more overrated. August Wilson overall is probably a better playwright than Arthur Miller. But uh, anyway, uh, but one, one thing, one yeah. thing I noticed, I was reading some of Long Day's Journey to the Night a while ago, and I also watched a production of it. Which, um, which one? With, uh, which, which one with uh, with uh, Long Day's Journey into Night? I have it right here. So, oh, but I mean, which, which, did you see the six the, the movie from the sixties, the film, or did you see the PBS production from the eighties or nineties? I've seen both at, at alternate times. I saw the one with uh, the Cindy Lament directed, and I saw the one with uh, with Kevin Malkovich. In the with, with, with the one with John Malkovich. Uh, no, it was Kevin Spacey in the uh, role of uh, Jamie. Oh, okay. Um, and Jack Lemmon in the role of Tyrone. Well, we but, won't, we won't see that version with Kevin Spacey for a long time, probably. <laughs> well, you know, those type, the, you've mentioned that as an aside. I, I find those type of things annoying, in a sense, because he is still a good actor. Yeah. And I've had conversations with people where they can't really separate the man from from the act, and so he might be a toad in real life, but I don't really give a fuck. He's he's, he's a great actor, or, or at least a very good actor, and he's had a few great performances, and I would consider his role in Long Days During the Night be one of them. Yeah. Um, but I, as I was, I was watching that, and then I was also reading this, I noticed that O'Neill almost breaks things down to the letter, whereas your stage direction doesn't. Um, you know, he's describing the room. He's describing exactly which books will be in there. Yeah. And I assume people haven't really followed this to a T. So it sort of makes it inconsequential why he would include this, why he needs to include Schopenhauer and Nietzsche and, and Marx. Well, and I'll tell you why. Do you want to know? I'll tell you why. Because some artists need to be able to fill in all the... In order for him to put the drama, O'Neill probably had to have that background there. Because... Probably, probably in his life, there were very similar things as he's projecting from memory. To me, most of my plays, virtually all of my plays, it's blackness with just a few props, which should make them easy to produce, which is another reason I do that, but it's the lesser reason. Um, uh, I will at some point, a few years from now, maybe 70, 80 plays in, do some highly realistic dramas with no, with no you know, just as I want to, you know, just, just as I do things just to show that I can do highly realistic dramas uh, with no nothing there and just have the words be cutting like fucking knives into each other. But but that's the reason. He could not have written A Long Day's Journey into Night in his mind without that. He needed that detail. If he was to have a black stage like I did, he would have been lost. He needed that. It seems it seems very dictatorial, though. It's, if you need it, just get started. Fine, but you sort of just begin reading this like well, like going through clear water. Um, it's not as if it's not well wrought. I think that it is. But once you get to the actual conversation between Tyrone and Mary, that's where I think the play actually starts. Yeah. I don't necessarily give a shit about reading three pages of stage direction. Yeah. Well, and because because most when you're actually watching it. You know, you're not going to say. I mean, you're not having the spot like like I did having on the teddy bear. You know, here's Schopenhauer because someone in, in row seventeen isn't going to be able to make out Schopenhauer. Yeah, 